She lost her son in the World Trade Center, and ever since then, she has become an activist to make sure that what happened on September 11, 2001, does not happen again. Her name is Mary Fetchett. She is the founder of Voices of September 11, an organization created to bring together support and help heal the wounds of the relatives of the victims of 9-11. And today we are delighted to have her on the program. It's a pleasure having you here. Good to be here. Thank Welcome you. back. Oh. You were here in December <laughs> at Lincoln College. Yeah. We had a screening of a documentary that you were in uh, called uh, uh, On Native, Native Soil. Soil which is all basically a documentary uh, that documented what happened on 9-11 and the involvement of the relatives. But uh, we want to talk about all of that, how you, became, how you became an activist. But first, forgive me, let me take you back to September 11, 2001. Okay. What was happening then? What, what, your son was doing what at the World Trade Center? Uh, Brad was uh, 24 and he worked at a company, uh, Keith Brett and Woods, which was on the 89th floor of Tower 2. And on September 11th, he called my husband, Frank, to tell him that he was OK, just to let him know that a plane had flown into Tower 1. Um, they had been told to remain in the building, and so they were following that direction. Uh, and then he called me at home. Uh, my work schedule had actu actually changed. Uh, so he left me a message, uh, just reiterating, reiterating that same um, message he had given me, my husband, assuring me that he was okay, um, and asked me to call him when I received the message. And when did you receive the message? Uh, it wasn't until I re returned home from work. Um, my husband called me at work, and I worked as a social worker in an outpatient mental health clinic, and was sitting with a, with a client uh, at the time. Uh, my husband called to tell me about Brad calling him, and uh, so I ended the session and went into another room uh, in an adjoining uh, building, actually, that had a TV. And as I walked in, uh, then I saw the second plane hit Tower 2. And uh, I had been to Brad's office uh, before, but, uh, you know, only once or twice, so I wasn't real familiar with the building. And at that time, I was just trying to calculate how much time it would require him uh, to get down through the building and trying to, to um, uh, determine where the plane had flown into the building. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the several days following 9-11, how long did you have to wait to realize, well, Brad is not coming back? Well, it was um, very challenging. Uh, you know, when you're a parent, you don't know the people that your children work with. And I, I did remember one woman's name, and I did call her. Uh, I think um, it may have been, everything's sort of a blur, but mm -hmm. uh, either that day or the following day. And of course, uh, she didn't have good news to sh share with me. But it seemed like it, it was quite a while before we really knew uh, that, that Brad had perished. And his friend, friends had actually set up a control room and they went from hospital to hospital. And then, of course, we knew people working in the hospitals in New York and were in touch with them. But, um, you know, as, as everyone knows, uh, there weren't a lot of bodies that uh, were uh, retrieved from the World Trade Center site. All the relatives were going crazy at the time, mm -hmm. walking around with signs, to, have you seen this person, right. or with photos yes. of the relatives that were missing. But then you get home that night, and you listen to this recording with his voice. And in the documentary uh, on Native Soil, you say something to the effect that, you know, you love hearing his voice, but you don't like the message. Well, I just think uh, about the horrific death uh, he suffered. And if you've read 102 Minutes, um, which uh, goes into great detail about what was going on in the building, um, and of course, if you watched the videos and saw people jumping from the buildings, you know. Uh, you know, that they were suffering for quite some time, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, in subsequent uh, messages that he left his girlfriend uh, after the plane hit, you could hear the fear uh, in his voice uh, along with the sirens in the background. Mm. So how did you feel as a mother listening to your son and knowing that, you know, he might not be coming back and he's leaving you this message, basically reassuring you that he was okay? Uh-huh. Well, I think we were all you know, like the country was dazed. Um, uh, fairly soon after I arrived home, uh, friends uh, started arriving 
uh, because they were receiving messages from their children uh, living and working in New York. Um, people were driving in from other states, some of his friends. And then, of course, uh, there were, I think, four phones uh, going at once, um, as I have a very large family and friends living outside the area. So probably in that first week, we had about 3,000 people come wow. through our house. Wow. Amazing. Uh, Mary, we'll be right back. Uh, and, and when we do, uh, we want to watch a little portion of that documentary we've been talking about, because basically what happened is that Mary became an activist at this point. She basically uh, 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 got together with a bunch of other relatives and basically pressured the government to investigate 9-11. And we're going to find out all about that when we come back.